All right, so you are in surgery. Uh, Miss Samantha Gray, age 50, undergone a hysteroscopy and the results are normal. She's about to be discharged, right? Talk to the patient about alcohol consumption. Okay, so we're going to talk about the alcohol consumption. Cool. So let's see what are the questions that you need to cover uh, when you're taking the history of alcohol consumption. So first of all, you need to, you need to ask about alcohol. A patient is drinking alcohol or not so first question will be do you drink alcohol that is very very important if patient is drinking what do you drink right you need to ask how much do you drink you need to ask how often do you drink you need to ask for how long you have been drinking so that is very very important first of all you need to elaborate about the drinking of this patient uh, so we'll be asking about do you drink what do you drink how much do you drink how often and how long you have been drinking because in the uk 14 units per week is okay with the uh, two days alcohol free that is fine but it doesn't mean a patient will be doing binge drinking for example patient is taking all 14 units in a day and the next six days is not taking anything that doesn't make any sense so patient can take these 14 units in one week considering patient has got two alcohol free days that's how we have to do so we'll be elaborating about the alcohol do you drink what do you drink how much and how often and for how long but in certain conditions certain kind of uh, station for example in this patient came for what hysteroscopy result and suddenly we started asking about alcohol patient might feel upset you know first of all you have got the result you can disclose the result okay your results are fine but now how to introduce the topic of alcohol patient might feel offended if you straight away start talking about alcohol so what to do start with past medical history because what we do anyhow we need to cover these question uh, medical condition and addictions and all we need to cover for any dependency we need to cover, cover cage dwt question and mish fam question just remember this mnemonic mish fam we need to cover these things right so when you're covering this anyhow we need to cover medical condition medication and addiction so instead of starting from alcohol because it might make your patient uncomfortable if you straight away start from alcohol so start from past medical history ask about uh, medical condition uh, medication so start with these things once patient will tell you these things then you start from the lifestyle like smoking alcohol drug and when you say about alcohol patient will say yes and you go in uh, elaboration and elaborate alcohol and then you will get the answers after that we need to cover these questions cut down annoyed guilty eye opener cage dwt is a standard question that you need to ask in any of the dependency cut down have you ever tried to cut down on your alcohol annoyed do you feel annoyed when somebody talks to you about your alcohol guilty do you feel guilty when others talk to you about your alcohol eye opener do you use alcohol as the first thing in the morning that's eye opener that's your cage questionnaire after that you need to ask for dwt d dependency are you dependent on alcohol so how you can ask you can ask are you able to do your daily to day activities without drinking alcohol withdrawal if you don't drink do you get some withdrawal symptoms like tummy pain like uh, uh, sweating nausea or uh, maybe shaking of the hands that is something tolerance do you have to increase the amount of alcohol you are taking to get the same effect so these are the questions that you need to cover in dependency cage dwt pretty important right after that we need to cover mish fam question you need to ask for the mood of the patient how's your mood uh, if patient has got good mood or not and you can tell the patient to score the mood as well on a scale of 1 to 10 inside of the patient you will get to know when you're asking the patient patient will be telling you or you can ask like you think you are drinking more than usual but patient might be saying no i'm not drinking that much so you'll get the idea whether patient is uh, having insight or not or you can ask do you think you have got any problem we can help you out with suicide have you ever tried to harm yourself because see when patient drinking alcohol there might be some reason why they started drinking alcohol patient might be too happy or patient might be too sad so that was the reason they started drinking alcohol so we need to see they might be 
trying to do suicide in future so we have to be very much sure have you tried to harm yourself or you can say um, there are people that try to harm themselves have you ever tried to do the same you can ask about the hallucination as well you can ask about visual like do you see things which others don't see do you hear things which others don't hear do you feel that something is crawling on your body do you have got a strange sense of smell or you can ask this also in uh, third person language actually you can ask this as well in third person language there are people they see things which others don't see have you experienced this thing right there are people see i mean hear things which others don't hear have you ever come across this kind of thing right we need to cover family friends forensic and finances who is living with the patient because the, that will be helpful in the treatment as well or maybe somebody is living in the family who is also drinking with the patient so that is something very very important we need to see the friends as well maybe patient has got that kind of friend circle which is encouraging the patient to drink alcohol so family friends important forensic if patient has got any problem with the law so and because of that patient is under depression and that's why patient is drinking alcohol so that's why we have to cover the forensic part as well finances is very very important you need to see if patient is working or not and where the patient is working for example patient is working in a bar for example patient is working in a bar so that is something very very important we need to see that also because the patient is working in the bar patients are more prone to drink alcohol so maybe we can counsel them later on as well in regards to the bar as well right and we need to see the addictions alcohol yes if patient is taking any other, other drugs or not patient has got any medical condition or taking any medications or not so instead of ending the things with the, these points you can start the question with these past medical history and then you cover to the lifestyle and able to cover all the questions in sequence right so meaning this mish fam it's not like you need to ask uh, the things in this sequence you can ask uh, in any sequence but make sure you are covering these points uh, for sure right that's how the history you will be taking in alcohol dependency right and let's see the management what do you think will be the management we have got uh, non medical things we have got medical stuff we have got alcohol anonymous groups also known as aa group so what happen in this these are the groups where the name of the patient will be kept anonymous and uh, we what we do in these uh, we uh what we do we make the connection between the patient and the person who has taken our help who has stopped drinking or who has cut down on the drinking and we just uh, get our patient in contact with that person and they will just discuss the thing we try to find out why this patient started drinking alcohol and all and maybe the person who has already cut down or stopped might be of any help so this is what we do in aa groups right and the name of the patient will be kept anonymous we can have one to one session we can do cbt sessions so what we do in that cbt sessions uh, we simply discuss with the patient like uh, why why they started drinking alcohol what was the reason behind it maybe they were too happy they were too sad that was the reason and if we can manage that reason that would be really happy that will be really really helpful right uh family therapy again it will not be against the patient wish so if patient wants to take the help of the family family members that would be considered we can uh, uh, discuss the thing with the family members as well and we can maintain an alcohol diary as well because you know if uh, we are trying to do this thing and we are trying to tell the patient you have to stop it abruptly it's not easy we have to make small small goals we have to maintain this diary and we'll make small small goals and we'll encourage the patient to follow those goals and if patient is able to follow we will be able to know at what amount of time patient will be able to cut down or stop drinking alcohol right and we will try to attain those goals as much as possible right so in alcohol always try to say cut down don't say stop try not to say stop if patient has got some problem because of alcohol patient has got problem because of alcohol say cirrhosis of liver then you can say stop alcohol otherwise try to say cut down because if you're drinking 14 years per week that's fine that's not something uh, uh, that we should be worried of right that is recommended one so we have to say cut down until unless patient has got problem with alcohol there are some medical uh, therapies as well some medications also we can give it to the patient that will be helpful in uh, 
this like a camprosate that is actually for craving we have got naltrexone that is actually given for relapses disulfuram is deterrent patient can take that and a patient drink alcohol if they are on disulfuram they'll be feeling really bad they will be having a sense uh, they are having nausea vomiting they feel like they're gonna die that is the work of uh, disulfuram and chloridigepoxide that is for withdrawals so if patient has got any withdrawal symptoms because they are not drinking alcohol they might experience something withdrawal symptoms like nausea vomiting like sweating like uh, shaking of the hand tummy upset all these things so we can give chloridigepoxide to uh, counteract those uh, side effects or withdrawal symptoms that's how we're gonna deal with these kind of cases so make sure you're using the word cut down and you might be struggling sometime you know to uh, uh, to explain these things to the patient patient they are not ready to listen to you if they don't have insight you know so you can tell first of all you can try to convince the patient why it is so necessary for you to cut down on your alcohol if they're not listening to you you can scare the patient i know i know john you're fine at the moment but this alcohol can give uh, lots of lots of problems to you uh, not now maybe but maybe in the future you might have problem with your liver with your kidney with your heart and it is advisable to cut down on your alcohol it's advisable to cut down on your alcohol you're not alone we can help you out we have got medical non medical therapy and if you want i can discuss it with you moreover we can give you some leaflets and pamphlets you can read about it and come back and we can discuss the things in detail i mean we have to see where and uh, uh, where you can counsel this patient and where you can uh, get uh, uh, this thing in the mind of the patient how you can put it and always always try to convince the patient right never force the patient so that is pretty important thing so that's the case of uh, alcohol dependency right thank you